guys I hope you had a great weekend and uh, just want to remind you like Sean said on Sunday that we are going to have our Easter service this Sunday 10 30 yep. and it's going to be drive-in style so we encourage you guys bring your families drive-in theater style. drive-in theater okay yeah. so we're not it's not Sonic <laughs> all right <laughs> but we're going to come you guys and park your cars uh, we're going to have an FM uh, station that you guys can tune into for it and have some speakers too if you guys uh, radios don't work in your car but please come join us, guys. It's a nice time to just come and wave at each other and at least know each other still exists, not just on a screen. So please come out at 1030 on uh, Easter Sunday, guys. And then we have our youth group going on Wednesday night. Uh, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to split up the middle school and the high school. So middle school is going to, going to be at 630 and then high school at 730 on Zoom. I will send out texts again. I will give the password and all that stuff. But uh, contact me if you guys want to be involved with that if you haven't heard from me already. And then we have our women's study. It's also on Zoom. You guys can connect with them at 1 o'clock on Thursday. And we're thinking it's 7 o'clock on Thursday as well in the evening. But check with Vicki just to make sure. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. And then Sean will get into the devotion we have for you guys. So, Lord, we love you. And we just thank you for your blessings. Lord, I thank you for the neat things we're getting to see you do. We're hearing about great reports about people coming to you. And uh, Lord, I ask that you continue just to have people in other people's lives that are hopeless, that they would be able to be that light for you. Lord, I, I just ask that you would help those out that are in need right now, that don't have the jobs, that are coming to the end of the money that they did have, waiting for the stimulus or whatever, that, that they would just be able to trust in you, and Lord, you would make other people around them aware of their needs so that they can help each other out, Lord. Please keep us uh, where our eyes are open in the church and uh, how we can help our neighbors out and uh, each other, Lord. And we love you and just pray for this. Devotion this morning and just speak to our hearts, Lord. And we just uh, give it over to you and put it in your hands, Lord. We love you. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, we're going to be uh, reading from Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. But as the Lord put these things on my heart to share with you this morning, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is something that God's been speaking to me about. In this time of shaking, in this time of opportunity, because of the things that are going on in our world, we as believers, we as followers of Christ, um, need to consider certain things. We need to consider the gospel message. We need to consider what, who and what we're putting our trust in. Is, is God maybe revealing to us things that we have put our trust in other than Him? And, and, and But one of the things that the Lord calls us to that we need to consider in light of the times we're living in and in light of the, the, the possibility of His return as we look outwardly that's going on, what's going on around us, is we need to consider how we're living our lives in regards to um, sin, purity, and holiness. And, and we're called to walk in, in purity. We're called to be holy the way that the Lord is holy, to be holy like He is holy. Be holy for He is holy is what He tells to us. And, and so with the Lord's return, with this call to holiness, may we, may we take just a brief look at sin, maybe in a, in a kind of a fun and humorous way even, but see this, the, the importance of walking in purity, turning away from sin, fleeing from sin, and, and, and living a devoted, holy life that in walking down paths of righteousness that the Lord has called us to. So in, in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21, it says this. Um, I call this my Oreo cookie pa passage. So it says in verse 21, it says, With her enticing speech, she causes him to yield. And with her flattering lips, she seduces him. Now, ever since I started working out on a regular basis, I've been paying more attention to, with my wife's help to the food that I eat. And for the most part, I've been eating healthy kinds of foods. But, but, but the more, I have to be honest, the more I experience um, 
healthy foods and the more experience I have with healthy foods, the more I come to realize that for the most part, I know there's some who disagree, but in my opinion, for the most part, healthy food tastes really bad. <laughs> and, and unhealthy food tastes really good. I agree. Curtis agrees. <laughs> Consequently, it's difficult for me to want to eat healthier foods, even though I know that they're better for me. And when I think about this in regards to spiritual matters, I, I find some similarities in, in, the, in that evil and sin are a lot like unhealthy food. In other words, just like the Oreo cookie, which some consider to be an unhealthy food, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but just like that Oreo cookie that stares at me from the glass cookie jar on my countertop and entices me and seduces me to eat it, so does sin stare at us, entices us, and seduces us to partake in what it's offering. And, and, and guys, from that jar, the Oreo cookie will talk to me. It does. And it tells me how good its cream filling is going to taste. But it never mentions the fact that it, as my wife always says, is full of empty calories that will only cause me have to run an additional mile or two if I eat it. And the evil and sin, excuse me, and evil and sin is like this. It's also like this. As, as sin never mentions the cost. The cost of the consequences that come with partaking in what is being offered. In other words, sin doesn't want us to consider the cost attached to giving in to the temptations. So with enticing speech, with flattering lips, sin will try to seduce us into partaking of things that are evil and things that are harmful to us and harmful to others around us. But listen, church, we need to remember. We need to remember that no matter how good or appealing sin makes itself look, there is a cost attached to that evil, to what evil offers, and there is a price that has to be paid that is not in the slightest bit worth what is being offered. And the Word of God is clear to warn us about this. And in Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, we're told that our sin will find us out. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, you guys know it. It says that ultimately the wages of sin is death. And listen, when God was speaking to Cain about his need to turn away from the sin that he was being tempted with, by the sin that he was being enticed with, God said to him in Genesis chapter 4, He said, Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And God calls us, He calls us to not be ruled by sin, to not give in to the desires of our flesh, that, that, that desire sinful things. And he calls us to be ruled by his spirit, what leads us into life and which gives us life. So, in one part, I call you to take my word for it. One Oreo cookie and its creamy filling is not worth the extra miles I have to run in order to shed those empty calories that that delicious cookie brought into my body. And even more importantly, let us take God's word for it and realize that sin and the temporary pleasures that it can bring, the temporary pleasures the Bible says that so easily passes away, they are not worth the consequences that come along with these pleasures. So this morning I pray that we'd stop to consider the cost of sin that comes to us and the cost of sin that comes to others around us when we're tempted and face the enticing speech and the flattering lips of sin which which desires to seduce us. But more importantly, listen, church, I pray that we would stop to consider the price that Jesus had to pay for our sin. And that we would choose the path of righteousness and that we would choose holiness as we flee from sin, that sin which so easily can so easily snare us. And so I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you and may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.